We turn now to the latest about the National Security Agency. On Monday, a federal judge ruled the NSA's bulk collection of Americans' phone records, quote, almost certainly violates the Fourth Amendment's prohibition against unreasonable searches. U.S. District Judge Richard Leon described the NSA's activities as, quote, almost Orwellian. He wrote, quote, I cannot imagine a more indiscriminate and arbitrary invasion than the systematic and high-tech collection and retention of personal data on virtually every single citizen. Judge Leon was appointed to the bench by President George W. Bush in 2002. Leon suspended enforcement of his injunction against the program pending an expected appeal by the government. The suit was brought by conservative attorney Larry Klayman, the founder of Judicial Watch and based on information leaked by former NSA contractor Edward Snowden. In a statement Monday, Snowden said, I acted on my belief that the NSA's mass surveillance programs would not withstand a constitutional challenge and that the American public deserved a chance to see these issues determined by open courts. Snowden went on to say, quote, today a secret program authorized by a secret court was, when exposed to the light of day, found to violate Americans' rights. It's the first of many, he said. Joining us in Washington, D.C., is Sasha Meinrath, director of the New America Foundation's Open Technology Institute. He served as an expert witness who advised the Review Group on Intelligence and Communications, which was tasked by President Obama to review the NSA's activities. Welcome back to Democracy Now!, Sasha. First, respond to the judge's ruling. The ruling is really historic. It's the very vanguard of the pushback that says constitutionally, legally, what has been taking place is unacceptable. And I think it's a reaffirmation of both our Fourth Amendment rights, our constitutionally guaranteed rights, in this constant interplay of balancing national security and individual rights. Talk about the ruling specifically when it comes to um, his saying that it's almost surely unconstitutional, calling the um, collection of data Orwellian. Mm -hmm. So the judge issued a very strong ruling. This clearly is a case where the judge feels very empowered to say this should absolutely cease and desist. And because he feels that there is no evidence before his court that this has actually been a successful balancing of national security and individual rights, that he wants to give the, the, the U.S. government every opportunity to respond on appeal. He said, basically, this will probably take another six months. But in the meantime, he feels so strongly about his position that he's saying the government must now prepare the groundwork, lay the foundation for accepting this decision and complying with it, i.e., ceasing and desisting the widespread data collection that it has been doing for the past 10, 12 years. The head of the National Security Agency appeared before Congress last Wednesday to argue bulk collection of U.S. phone data should continue. General Keith Alexander compared the mass sweep of phone records to the running of a library. The information that is out there, the billions and billions of books of information that are out there, there is no viable way to go through that information if you don't use metadata. In this case, metadata is a way of knowing where those books are in the library and a way of focusing our collection, the same that our allies do, to look at where are the bad books. From our perspective, from the National Security Agency's perspective, what we do is get great insights into the bad actors overseas. Your response to that, Sasha Meinra. Uh, first, it's a failed metaphor, for sure, but certainly this is also the case where they're scrambling to find justification for, in essence, criminalizing everyone. And by that, I mean, when you're doing active search and seizure of personal information, and let's be clear, metadata is still personal information around everyone in the country. What you've, in essence, done is you've said, we're casting a dragnet where we assume the guilt of everyone. And what today's, yesterday's court ruling really demonstrated is that that is unacceptable. You must have reasonable cause to be collecting this. There must be warrants issued. There must be a presumption of guilt, an assumption that there is some reason to collect individual personal information about citizens and residents in the United States. And that has not been met. And what's clear here is that the NSA is now scrambling for some justification, some reason why it's okay to say everyone 
not just in the U.S., but on the planet, is worthy of active surveillance. I want to ask you, Sasha Meinratha, about the Presidential Advisory Committee charged with reviewing the NSA. The panels reportedly concluded that the Obama administration should leave most of the National Security Agency's controversial bulk spying intact. Last week, in an interview with MSNBC's Chris Matthews, President Obama talked about the review panel. I've said before, and I will say again, the NSA actually does a very good job about not uh, engaging in domestic surveillance, not reading people's emails, not uh, listening to their, the content of their phone calls. Outside of our borders, the NSA is more aggressive. It's not constrained by laws. And part of what we're trying to do over the next month or so is, having done an independent review and brought a whole bunch of folks, civil libertarians and uh, lawyers and others, to examine what's being done, uh, I'll be proposing some self-restraint on the NSA and uh, you know, to initiate some reforms that can give people more confidence. That's President Obama. Sasha Meinrath, you were an advisor to President Obama's advisory committee. Um, talk about what this committee advised, what's been leaked, and what President Obama said. Sure. Well, the irony that the White House is now leaking information and is also upset that other people have leaked information previously, in particular Snowden, is not lost on me. But this, this NSA review group ostensibly was to take a look at an independent expert review of what the NSA was doing and to think about ways in which it could be better balanced between the individual rights and national security interests. I was part of that review process. Uh, call me advisor maybe a bit strong, but certainly I was brought in to provide expert information about concerns that were uh, clear in what they were doing. And it's also clear that they, thus far, have not released any information that would lead me to believe that they've taken those concerns very seriously. So in essence, what you have right now is a reaffirmation just last week that the metadata collection, this notion that, and the president is correct, he's not reading emails very often. They're not listening to phone calls very often. What they're collecting is who you're in contact with, when you're in contact with them, where you're located, all these metadata around the actual content of your phone calls and emails. And the NSA review group has concluded, according to the leaks that have happened thus far, that that should continue. Now, mind you, that was leaked on Friday. On Monday, a federal judge says that exact same activity is unconstitutional. Um, let's talk about the panel members um, and the independence of this panel. Richard Clark, former U.S. cybersecurity advisor, Michael Morell, former deputy CIA director, Jeffrey Stone, University of Chicago law professor, Cass Sunstein, Harvard Law School professor, who once worked in the administration, Peter Swire, who served on Obama's National Economic Council, um, Sasha Meinrath. Sure. So I, I am on record and quite public in my concern over the actual independence of this group. I'm one of the 47 technologists that wrote a letter to the president saying we need technological acumen on a technological review committee. That was ignored, unfortunately. I was also very concerned about the notion that, uh, that intelligence community insiders, administration officials comprise the entirety of this five-member group. And I do not see how you can do a truly independent review of, of surveillance when so many people are tied in. And this is, I think, epitomized by the fact that this review group is housed under James Clapper, under the very agency that it is supposed to be independently reviewing. What do you mean it's housed there? So if you go to their website, you actually go to DNI. You actually go to the intelligence uh, ministry here in the United States. That's where you can get information about the group. It reports to Clapper and his uh, agency. And then that agency passes along whatever is vetted out of that report. It passes that along to the president for the president's review. And how do you see that influence? Now, we haven't seen the report. We've only seen their leaks. But Correct. how did that influence the discussions you heard? 
Well, the discussions I heard, for example, in the meeting that I was at, whenever we would bring up sensitive information around, like, the actual technological nuts and bolts of how this worked, public information, but public information that is still officially classified, the review group would say, well, we need to have a secure briefing about that. And what it really means is that you and anyone else that doesn't have security clearance can't be in that discussion. And so what I saw over the course of this review group process is not necessarily a malfeasance of the individuals involved. I actually think that they are driven by a heartfelt desire to do good, but a process that is so completely skewed that the outcome itself is almost preordained. I do not see how at the, at the outset they'd set up a process that would allow for a truly independent analysis, much less a walk back of, of a lot of the surveillance that's happening or major meaningful reforms that would cease and desist the kind of surveillance that we believe and now a federal judge agrees is unconstitutional. I also wanted to ask you about Sunday's CBS 60 Minutes report on the NSA. This is reporter John Miller interviewing NSA head general Keith Alexander. The reporter, John Miller, is the former associate deputy director of national intelligence for analytic transformation and technology. There is a perception out there that the NSA is widely collecting the content of the phone calls of Americans. Is that true? No, that's not true. NSA can only target the communications of a U.S. person with a probable cause finding under a specific court order. Today, we have less than 60 authorizations on specific persons to do that. The NSA, as we sit here right now, is listening to a universe of 50 or 60 people that would be considered U.S. persons. Less than 60 people globally who are considered U.S. persons. That's uh, General Keith Alexander being questioned by reporter John Miller, who used to work in the New York Police Department and then as Associate Deputy Director of National Intelligence. Um, your response, Sasha Meinrath, to this whole 60 Minutes report. Sure. So, one, it's important to remember Clapper uh, and others have lied previously. You know, as he, I believe Clapper put it, he told the least untruth when he was before Congress and lied to Congress on this. Uh, what we've seen, though, is also this definitional nuancing. They are collecting huge amounts of information. Tens of millions of phone calls are monitored actively. What this really was was an attempt to say, but are you listening individually to specific phone calls? And that, on an average basis, is probably a far smaller group. But regardless of that, What's clear here is that what's actually happening and the spin about what's actually happening are quite discrepant. And so what we're seeing time and time again, and I believe 60 Minutes was absolutely involved in this, I think the Wall Street Journal and New York Times and their sensationalistic uh, pieces where they said major reforms are coming, and then in the details you find out that is not the case. This is part of a widespread campaign to mislead the general public about what's actually transpiring. And the reason why the Snowden revelations are so important is because each and every time somebody says something that is verifiably false, we now have bits and pieces of information that can actually demonstrate that fact. I believe that what Clapper is saying and, and the definitional nuances that he's using, you know, 60 people who are considered, um, uh, you know, U.S. citizens and different ways of sort of parsing this make it perhaps technically approaching truth, but in the spirit of what's actually been said, completely untrue. I think if we were to dive into what's actually happening, we'd see it's not 60 people that are being actively surveilled, but thousands or tens of thousands or even larger numbers of people that are under active surveillance. Uh, and that definitionally, they're saying, well, even though they're American citizens, we've justified them as being 51 percent foreign or not located in the United States, and therefore they don't count in this list of 60 that he mentions. It's, it's very deceptive. President Obama, finally, uh, Sasha, is meeting today with the heads of the world's largest technology companies, including Apple, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Twitter, LinkedIn, Yahoo. What do you think has to happen? Well, it is clear that the damage reputationally to the United States and to these companies in particular is 
astronomical. It'll be measured in the tens of billions of dollars economically. Socially, it'll be far worse than that. And I think many of these companies are now seriously concerned about the ongoing damage that these revelations, but in particular the NSA's activities, have created for them. And so I think what we're seeing now is a number of companies, of which that list that you uh, mentioned is sort of the vanguard, who are saying this must cease and desist. We must have transparency about what's happening. We must have a public debate about what is acceptable in terms of this balance between national security and individual rights. And we must reestablish the global trust in the U.S. as an ethical Internet steward and in these companies in particular. And I expect that they will push back fairly strongly on what's been leaked thus far in terms of the incredibly marginal pivoting that the NSA Review Group is currently recommending. Sasha Meinroth, I want to thank you for being with us, director of the New America Foundation's Open Technology Institute, one of the expert witnesses who advised Obama's NSA review group. And, of course, we'll continue to follow this issue. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. When we I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global grassroots news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org today. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.